owner inside the tribe, inside the circle, or is he outside the circle? Well, I think he's a guy that, you know, gives the, um, the overall, I don't think that it's happenstance that teams win. I, I think ownership has a major part of it. When I look at, uh, you know, the Yankees and the Patriots and, you know, the Lakers and basketball, those owners are all been significant, uh, people in the uh, success of those three different sports in three different, uh, cities that have brought championships and multiple championships to their, their town and their teams. So I, I think ownership's really important. And, you know, the owner that I had in Chicago, um, simply said, uh, you're not going to see my face. Uh, we'll be in the locker room at the end of the year if we lose to tell the players I appreciated their effort and come back and let's have a better year next year. You'll see my face at a Christmas party. And if we win, we'll be at the championship. We'll have a championship party. Now, the fortunate part about it was is that I didn't have to see him very often at the end of the season telling the players to go home and get ready for next season. We yeah, had plenty of parties. We had plenty of parties. No question. Parties, but he was, he was a hands, he was a guy that was never in the locker room. Say, us on the other hand, would come in the locker room. He would come on the team plane at times, and he was a guy that was associated a lot with players or more with players. But he'd always call me up and say, you know, I'm interested in taking out this player to lunch. I think he needs to have a little support. I think uh, he's not, it uh, doesn't look like he's enjoying himself or something. What do you think about that? And, you know, as a coach, I'd say, oh, I'm all for that. You know, go ahead and do that. And this is what's happened lately to him that might have been and make him look a little dour and not playing as well. And so uh, I felt that the communication level there was really good. And I think, uh, you know, Jim has really, Jim Dolan has a real desire to be a, um, a participant, but to be a fan and not to have to get into these personnel things that make it difficult for teams to survive. Was there anything that Jim Dolan had to say yes to for you to take the job? Was there anything that was a deal breaker for you that anything you had to have, either an element of control or anything, was there anything he had to guarantee you? Well, I told him I had to have the authority. The authority had to rest with me and that, you know, regardless of what I asked, if I asked him to do this, I would he, and, you know, would he concede to that? And he said yes. And I said that goes all the way from making tough decisions to making very simple decisions. And, you know, he was like, yes, I, I want you to have complete authority in, in executing the basketball and the big Madison Square Garden. So w with that in mind, we went forward in our discussions. And, uh, you know, here we are today. Did you have to make any concessions at all for the job? Did you have to change anything that would normally be your style to, do, to promise to do anything different than you've done in the past? No, uh, I haven't. Okay. You know, uh, that, that's, that's the part I think was really important. I have freedom of, of, uh, of, um, you know, talking to the press or being, uh, participating in the things that uh, were, you know, perhaps a little isolating, uh, isolating for the Knickerbocker organization. I don't think to call Knickerbockers anymore, Nickel organization. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's one of the things that we felt was, I felt was really important. How about for the fans? Are you going to be visible? Are you going to be a presence at games? Are you going to be around a lot? I mean, what what is this a style that you'll kind of form? I mean, what have you given that a lot of thought as to how much visibility and presence you'll show uh, on a day to day basis? Yeah, I, I think you know. I, I don't always want to be you know the focal point of a game. I don't want the cameras to have to go over and focus on uh, myself sitting in a ball game, either expressing expressing doubt, belief, disbelief, anger, whatever happens in a ball game. But I want to be there. I want fans to know that I'm, I'm overlooking this, and uh, you know we'll be there. Uh, you know, participating in the activity that's going on the floor and I want the players to know that and I want the coaches to know that also uh, but you know I think my main uh, resource is going to be to be um, up in the other workout facility in uh, Westchester and, um, you know getting to know the players and getting to know the personnel that uh, has put this team together. Does Carmelo have to change 
the way he plays to fit into what would be a acceptable system for you? I think we have to change some of the people around Carmelo so that he doesn't feel he has to carry the scoring load. And I think, you know, he's done an admirable job trying to do that. But I think the pressure of losing, you know, made him feel like it's not going to fall on my shoulders. I'm going to do my best to keep us from losing, which is best is scoring. He's one of the terrific scorers in the game of basketball. I think, uh, you know, providing some other support around him uh, in the scoring is going to give him an opportunity to relax a little bit into the game, play a different role on the offensive end, be more of a uh, of a guy who operates inside the offense rather than as the offense. Phil, recently a couple of guys uh, have stated in the league that Jerry West and a couple of other, they feel the level of talent in the league across the entire league is very weak to where it's been in recent years, really in the last generation. How do you think about the level of play here in the league right now? You think it's good? You think it's gone down? What do you think about the level of play in the league? Here, here's the deal um, that I, the way I feel about the game right now is that um, uh, the we, we copycat in this league a lot, Mike. And, you know, uh, John Nelson started running a lot of screen rolls with, um, you know, Nitsky and, and Nash in the mid-90s, and it increased, uh, you know, Mike D'Antoni increased the level of screen rolls. It became kind of a, a pension for how we were going to play the game. And you know, the game is obviously a great part of it is, you know, the two-man game, but that's both a five-man game. And... Uh, setting it up in, in a five-man structure and then operating it from there, I think, is really important to me. Um, and it, what's happened is that, you know, the AEU ball has gone that direction, which is more important sometimes than, than our high school basketball around the country. Absolutely. Is, uh, developing players. And so it's been, you know, basically let's get this player in a position where he can succeed or and so we've we've grown up a, a group of players that only know how to put the ball on the floor and how to individually score. Your point guard that just knows the screen roll and and how to dish and pass out of it, rather than everybody being playmakers and and having the idea of of uh, having skills that are part of basketball. And those skills, you know, I emphasize today at, at that. Uh, you know, initial meeting, um, uh, an announcement that, you know, footwork and passing are, you know, important skills in basketball that kind of lost art. And all those things enhance an offensive player's ability to, to do things. It's not just about dribbling or scoring, but it's about team play. And <clears throat> those are things I, I feel are really important to bring back and to, you know, have players understand that, uh, the value of that. So you know we're gonna we're gonna kind of get back to some of the basic basketball and you know teach it. You know it's so fall I think of the kids that are playing. I'm all for Adam uh, uh, Silver, the new commissioner, pushing the age limit back another year so that players become students or you know have a foundation of basketball that's more than just one and done. And I think it's it's kind of you know demented our our skill as basketball players a little bit. And besides that, it takes these young players numbers of years to really blossom into the kind of players that we want to see. And as a result, a lot of them fall through the cracks in their first contract when they come in at 19 years of age. So those are things that I, I hope to see develop in you know, this span of time that I'm going to spend uh, in New York and in this executive role. Talking with Phil Jackson. Phil, will practice be as important to you as it was as a coach? Will that still be a very important time for you in evaluation and probing and learning the things that you learned about a team that you did in practice? You know, practice is what makes teams really good. And, you know, the, um, the idea that those guys are the second line players, the reserve players, make those starters better. Those starters have to compete in practice, elevates the team. And, you know, those are things that, you know, really have to be spelled out as an organization. Now, there's diminishing returns. Um, obviously, I had a meeting with Kobe when he was 33. Then we talked about his knee and the fact that he's, you know, there are diminishing returns on the number of minutes he's played and he didn't need to practice as a player. It hurt us a little bit. We still won a championship in 2010 with him in limited practice. But those are, um, you know, 
those are extreme circumstances when players, you know, reach the limits of uh, minutes and just overwhelmed his body and the activity. But for players that are inside of, you know, 30 years of age, really practice becomes a paramount part of importance. Did you ever envision yourself in this role? Uh, I mean, as a coach, you probably didn't, but have you ever, I mean, when did you start to envision this role? Uh, I mean, was it because of maybe some things that happened health-wise and stuff like that? I mean, or did you along the way envision yourself for this role down the road? Um, no, I, you know, I really hadn't, Mike. I, I thought about uh, this last year, um, two years ago, December, I got uh, in contact with a young man who was trying to bring a team to Seattle, Chris Hansen. Um, he actually ended up buying the Maloose shares of the Sacramento Kings and was asking me to put together a basketball uh, group or basketball uh, segment of personnel. So I started thinking about that aspect of it. And, uh, you know, obviously it was derailed, and they kept the team in Sacramento, bless their hearts. And, um, you know, but that was the first time I really started thinking about, you know, what it would be like to, um, you know, put together a group of people that carried forth some of the ideas that we shared in basketball and how to play it. And the belief that you, you must appease the basketball gods to win. <laughs> And as as people will hear, uh, as is a credo with you, right? Chop wood, carry water, right? That's, that's right. It comes down to the basics. Uh, as it does most of the time. Listen, congratulations. Uh, I think everyone obviously is very excited to have you here. And uh, we'll look forward to this going forward because it's, uh, it's going to be fun to watch. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate it. Oh, no, right. I can't call you a coach anymore, that's for sure. So now we got to call the, uh, just call him Phil, or, or maybe President. We'll have to see. We'll have to come up with a new term for you now. So now, you know, I don't know if you like President. You know, that's what you always thought Bill Bradley would be, right? President, one of those. That's days, right. right. Yes. Well, listen, we wish you luck. Thanks, Phil, very much. All right, Mike. Thank you. Indeed. All right, Phil Jackson. Uh, you know, it's a different role. It really is. It's interesting. Now, we've seen a lot of guys morph into that. We've seen, we've seen what, uh, Clearly, Pat Riley has done. In some places, Bill Parcells has done. Some different guys who have morphed into that role. But here's a man who has made an incredible, an incredible monument to success as a coach. 11 championships. And now will take over as the Nick president. Mills will stay. Uh, he will be the general manager. You just heard Phil say he has complete control. He wouldn't have come if he did not have complete authority. He's been given complete authority and that he will do things his way and won't change his style. He said he will move here. That's what he, his plan is, but he'll do it slowly. And you just heard him talk about uh, what he hopes for the team in the future. Remember, he can't talk too specifically about a coach yet. He still has one. That'll be for next year. We all know that it won't be Mike Woodson, but clearly he's going to be respectful to Mike as he tries to make the playoffs this year. You did hear him say that he wants to change the people around Carmelo and make them change as much as make Carmelo change, but I think there's a little of both, as you heard him stress, teamwork, which is something uh, Carmelo, who's probably the number one isolation player in the league, doesn't do as much of as could probably be the case, as we all know. So uh, that's Phil Jackson. We'll take a break.